So to give everybody an idea of what we're doing here to support these marching bands, it's very challenging as everybody can see. There's 12 stacks of milos all around the field, ground stacked on the field. If you look on the console here, you can see that each, each stack is marked here, plainly. And then when you go to the VCA, basically, we can, when a band is facing away from us, we're reinforcing them on this side of the field. And when a band is facing away from us, or facing toward us, we're reinforcing them on that side of the field, on the opposite side of the field. So, uh, just as part of the show, they actually have the bands come out and change sides. One band will come out, they will face to, to the house left. The next band that comes out will primarily face to the house right. And so they just take turns flip-flopping back and forth. So, nonetheless, still the bands, as they march, they march from side to side. They're, they're, they're turning constantly. So as you can see here, when we're in VCA mode, it allows us to adjust how much level then. Once they turn towards us, we can push up the level to the far side because they've turned away from the folks on that side. We want to reinforce them more on that side. As they turn back to the other side, the fader comes back the other way. And we start reinforcing them on this side. So that's the real purpose here. So. Inputs go are assigned first to groups, and then you know, to auxes. They're assigned to, to auxes since each each set of ca each set of cabinets is on its own sin. And then the auxes are assigned to uh, PQ stereo, which separates which, side of Right. Okay. So PQ right. stereo that separates that makes it easy to separate, and then each group then is then assigned via is controlled via the VCA and that what allows us that allows us to change the volume very easily from side to side as the band moves dynamically across the field either towards us or away from us and also from end to end exactly I'll walk out here and show you that where these mics are placed and you can see these stacks. Each each one of these, we've got all we've got st the standard. We've got a PD out here. One two oh eight two oh eight PD runs all of the all of the cabinets on this side of the field. Since it's run in two oh eight, they run very efficiently. They only draw about three or four amps a piece max, even like at full rated output. You can see the Galileos. They're controlling um, the system and the timing. And on top of that is setting the profile input rack. And we keep our sure uh, wireless mics out here close to where they're being used just to minimize any chance of dropouts. You can see here these stacks were pre plotted using the Meyer Sound Lab software. Uh, in terms of uh, using a CAD drawing of the building, uh, inputting that into the software, and then plotting the pattern coverage of each one of these stacks. Next to this stack, you can see there's some subs here. We don't have a whole bunch of them. There's some down there as well. And then um, there's some JM1Ps on the back side, both, there's, there's one here, there's one down there on the top of that side of, of those subs. These are for on stage or on field monitors so that some of the bands have pre-recorded music that they either dance to or that um, signals them to start, start certain parts of their routine. So obviously they need to be able to hear what's happening out here on the field. Hence the need for on stage or on field monitors. And then you can see ab above me here that we've got a pair of, uh, I guess that's a KM, what, one, they're Neumann, I'm sure, I forget which mics they are. KM 130s, 131s, 
I'm not sure. I'll have to, I have to pull one down and look. As you can see, um, behind each stack is a set of microphones uh, in this XY configuration. And we'll walk down here and look at the next one. Now we're also tied into the house vertex system. You look up way, way up there, you can see the house vertex system. There's several hangs of it. There's a hang there, a hang over here, one, two, three in the corners. And, and again, another set of mics, XY, on field monitor position. And as you can see, as we get farther down the field, because, because the Milo is a 90 degree cabinet, you know, there'd be no point in having them all flat. So this, this, is, this is angled out at about a 45 degree angle compared to, the, to this cabinet here that's only at about a 15 degree angle. And then by the time we get down here to the end, we're turned all the way into the end zone and uh, we throw up another sub. These are actually micas on top of this uh, on top of this 700 HP here. Uh, firing in and you can see we've got another sure mic up here KSM 32 covering down here in the end zone. And so that's how we mic the field. That's how you mic a marching band. It's a set of mics behind, directly behind the stacks. And you can see that the stacks run the whole length of the field on this side. And you can see the stacks covering the whole length of the field on the other side. As well as tying in to the Vertec rig that covers all of the upper level seats. It covers the, the level three row seats. If we go back over here and look at our this end rack, or this next to the end stack of Milo's, you can see by the angle, it's basically shooting right up into the second and third, the second tier seats. The, uh, above the second tier seats is the club level. So we're kind of hitting both those levels. And there are downfill uh, balcony speakers up there that we have on a delay so that they're timed with our ground stack speakers here. So we, we've timed those so that they're in time with a uh, delay time. They are delayed so that they're in time with the ground stack speakers. There are a few other sins that go to like directly to the booth for recording purposes that are not delayed. Those go straight to tape and um, there's also several sins that are not delayed that go to rooms that are isolated for VIP areas and uh, media areas. And you can see then we have a performance stage here and if you look up here we can see we've got four wedges across the front. Um, we're going to have two different performers up here. There'll be a DJ back there as well. And if you're wondering, yes, because these monitors are uh, well behind, well in front of this primary stack here where the performances are happening, we will t these monitors will also be delayed so that, uh, you know, you, you're, our performers aren't hearing the mains first and then the monitor second. So we will add delay to the monitors in order to, to line them up with what the performers are hearing out of the main stacks that they're facing over here on these sides. So there's a lot of timing going on, a lot of different timing um, changes going on as well as just trying to just, just trying to basically distribute sound to as wide an area as possible. Um, as you can imagine with a marching band, marching bands are loud and 
they almost all have a vocalist who sing along with the band at some point or are speaking during certain key moments of their performances and what have you. So uh, they're, they're walking around with wireless handhelds and you know, one of the biggest challenges is just to get them up over the top of not only the band itself, but the band being amplified through the speaker system. So if you can imagine, it's, um, it's difficult. It, it, it takes a real finesse to get the EQ right and get the balance right between the band that's already loud acoustically, but nonetheless is being amplified and somebody with a simple handheld vocal mic. And there you have it. That is the layout for the Honda Battle of the Bands 2003. More video to follow later.